What's up YouTube? My name is Chad. This is the Wisco Boater Channel. Welcome back to another episode of the Maracaibo Project. Uh, yes, I am wearing a Dolphins hat and a Packers sweatshirt uh, since the Packers are out of the playoffs. My second favorite team is the Miami Dolphins. I don't wear Miami Dolphins stuff unless I'm wearing Packers stuff along with it, so don't worry. Nothing changing there, but go Fins in the playoffs. Anyway, uh, I'm going to start working on, uh, this will be part two of the seats, uh, the seat build for the Maracaibo. Um, the next thing I need to do is brace the, those crossbars that I built, the front, the uh, crossbars that I made out of uh, aluminum angle. They're very flexible, um, so I need to have some sort of bracing underneath them. And I did have, um, oh, I can't show that yet because there's something over here that I haven't announced yet. Um, I do have a piece, uh, a decent sized piece of half inch marine uh, plywood that I'm going to use to make the, uh, the braces for those uh, the seat bottoms. Uh, but in order to do that and to get the correct size and pattern, I am going to do what I usually do with stuff like this is uh, start with a piece of cardboard. I've got a giant cardboard box here. Should have, I actually have two of these. So I've got plenty of cardboard to make the supports for the seats and also to lay out the uh, front back seat bottoms and the front and back seat backs. So uh, we'll get in the boat and figure out what, uh, what shape this needs to be because the, the floor has a little bit of a, of a concave um, surface to it. So I'll do that, get the uh, first piece laid out and uh, we'll get the first few pieces cut here and uh, installed. Okay, so in the boat here, um, I think I'll be able to use this one piece of cardboard for all four of the um, supports that I'm going to make because uh, it's going to get narrower and narrower as I go forward and the, the shape at the bottom is going to change just a little bit going forward too so I can just keep trimming stuff off. So if I put this piece of cardboard right in here, um, I'm, this, is the, this is the straight straight edge so i'll keep that on top and i'm just going to have to make some iterations here um, to cut this down to uh, fit in the space that i have here you can see there's a pretty good gap right here and way too much up here I only want about a quarter of an inch above um, where the where the seat bottom is going to go just so it captures the seat bottom um, and it's obviously too wide so i don't need it to be that wide i want to have a little bit of uh, space on on either side to put an oar or something down down the side of the boat. So I'll just start marking this up. We'll do some cuts and I'll show you when I get to the uh, point of having this fit for uh, for the first support to be uh, to be made in the back uh, uh, the rear bar the rear seat rear bar. All right, so I have the uh, first support template made. Fit right between my marks right there. And you can see it fits right down on the floor nicely. There's a little, little uh, drop down here because the, the battery tray is a little bit lower. And uh, I'll use some right angle um, uh, brackets to attach this to the, to the floor through the carpet. But I've got a good uh, about 3 eighths of an inch or so uh, lip up here. So that's good for the first piece and then should be able to use this same piece for right up here just use uh, just cut this side down a little bit and if not I have more but uh, it actually that might be a little bit too much of a drop down but we'll we'll see what that looks like so I'll go ahead and get the first piece marked out on my board and then we'll move on to this one Last update for the evening is going to be the uh, boards have been cut and they're just set in place right now. Um, I don't have the L brackets to mount these to the floor yet, so I'll run to the hardware store tomorrow and get those. But uh, came out pretty much exactly uh, what I, the way I was thinking, just to give some support in the middle and allow pass through on either side uh, to store stuff. The seat bottoms will be removable, so this will kind of be a storage area as well so or both of these areas will be storage so turned out good just need to go get some L brackets mount to the floor and then I'll match drill the uh, boards to the aluminum 
put some nuts and bolts in, and I'll be making uh, seat bottoms next. Okay, I've got the boards covered in carpet and ready to install these. I'm going to use some uh, brass uh, inside corner braces to mount them to the floor. And then once they, uh, once they get set down on the, on the floor, then I'll drill the holes uh, into uh, the board and the aluminum and put some nuts and bolts in. So you didn't think I was gonna leave these uh, uncovered, just bare wood, did you? Seat supports are now done and installed. I used the uh, brass hardware for the mounting uh, to the bottom of the, uh, the floor to mount them to the floor and then just ran some screws in along the, uh, up underneath here. Seam up under there. And these are really, really solid now. So both front and back are done. So the next step will be making the, uh, uh, the seat base boards. So obviously I'm gonna need one there and one there. And then I will make the seat backs and we'll figure out how to um, brace those um, in, in, the, uh, in the middle there so there's, they don't flex uh, when somebody's sitting on them. So really happy with the way these turned out. So the next uh, couple of days, I'll work on getting some seat uh, bases and backs cut out and we'll wrap up this seat project. Cushions are gonna be later. I think I already mentioned that. Uh, won't be a part of this video, um, but I just wanted to get the seats made and we'll figure out cushions later. All right, back to work on the Maracaibo project. Um, I've got the uh, large box here pretty much broken down to uh, create some templates for the seat bottoms and seat backs. So I got that split. And uh, let's flip this over here. It's like a nice long piece of cardboard to uh, make some seat templates. And uh, I think I mentioned already, I do have two of these boxes, so I'll get uh, the seat bottoms made out of this one and then uh, get the other one split open and figure out our seat backs. And then we'll transfer that over to some plywood, which I have not yet purchased, but that'll be, uh, that'll be in the garage here before too long. So get some templates made and we'll get them fit. Okay, I've got the uh, cardboard cutouts for the seats done. Those look pretty good. I've got a little bit of a larger gap on the top side there, back here that I will fill in once I transfer this to uh, the plywood. Um, but this is one of the great things about working in cardboard first, because if I would have just tried to cut these out of plywood to begin with, uh, there'd be really no recovery from that other than buying a new piece of plywood. So this works out nicely. Here is the front seat as I envision it with a uh, cutout to walk through. Uh, this side looks pretty good. I've got the uh, little, little notch there for the anchor line. The other side is a little bit, a little bit off. And let me walk around here. So you can see the gap there on this side is off just a little bit. Um, my measurements are good. I think I probably just cut wrong. My measurements on paper are good. I think I may have just messed up the, uh, the measurement on the piece of cardboard. So I will add that to the plywood once I get to that point. But uh, this gives me a good idea of what the, uh, the seat bottoms and backs will look like. And with the cutout being here, my plan is to support the, 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 the edge of the cutout there with a post or something going down to the floor because that's gonna flex quite a bit. Even with plywood, I think that's gonna flex quite a bit. I'm gonna try it without first, but it'll probably will end up being uh, some sort of support post either to the floor there or from here over to the uh, the gunnel here. So, but this looks, uh, this looks pretty good. I'm happy with this for today. So now I just need to go buy a piece of plywood and we'll get these cut out. And uh, my plan is to coat them in epoxy and uh, smooth them and then sand them and then one more coat of epoxy to get them nice and smooth and weatherproof before figuring out what to do for cushions. 
All right, well, um, unfortunately, I have had a fairly significant change in, uh, in my life. I'm not gonna go into the details on this video. Um, I'll maybe talk about it later, but uh, at this point, for this boat, I'm gonna have to take a little bit of a break on it. Um, I, I will get back to it. I just have to uh, change some priorities around a little bit. Unfortunately, I'll be losing uh, the space to store boats and, uh, and work on some boats for a little while. Um, you can read into that whatever you want, but uh, it is what it is. So uh, in the meantime, the Maracaibo project is paused. And this boat that I have sitting right here is going to be what I'm going to be working on here for just a little bit. Now, this is not the boat that I think you see. You haven't seen it, but this is not the boat that I've referred to in uh, either this video or the previous one that was sitting over here. Uh, I still have that boat in storage. This one I was going to restore. This was going to be the next project. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get to the point of being able to restore this boat. So just going to do a few things to it to spruce it up a little bit. Um, and then uh, and it'll just end up getting flipped um, here in just a little while. So I'm going to work on this. Got to do a little, little bit of uh, playing around with this engine here. Uh, a little bit of cleanup on those seats. Uh, I've already done a, a significant amount of cleanup on this boat. By the way, this is a 1967 StarCraft Aero, um, 14 foot boat. Uh, very cool little boat, uh, all fiberglass, and it's in really pretty good shape. It's with a little bit of work, it's pretty much ready to go in the water. But uh, yeah, I gotta work on this one a little bit. I'll turn the camera around here and I'll show you this one. Uh, and then we'll end this video. And I gotta get, I'm not gonna video anything on this as far as work that I'm doing. Just wanna give you an update. To let you know where I'm at uh, with uh, with things in life at this point, uh, Maricopa project still going to go, uh, still going to work on it, restore it. I do plan on keeping this boat. Um, I've said that before about other boats, but that's the plan at this point anyway. But I got to get this one sorted out so I can get it sold. But uh, let's take a quick look at it, and uh, and we'll wrap this one up. Okay, so this is a 1967 Starcraft Aero. 14 foot boat. Uh, the engine that's on it is a 1962 Johnson 28 horsepower. So fairly close to being uh, period correct for the boat. Uh, usually don't see older motors on a newer vintage boat, but that is uh, that is the case with this one. Uh, the electrics uh, are not wired at this point. Um, so I don't know if the lights or anything actually work, but you can see it's, it's in really pretty good shape. It doesn't have any carpet in it. But good solid floor. Seats need a little bit of cleanup. All I did was power wash them, so get some seat cleaner and clean that stuff up. Um, been doing a little bit of work with the engine controls here. Um, got the steering all freed up. Windshield's in pretty good shape. It's a really a cool, cool looking, cool shaped boat. Got a nice, nice looking windshield on it, and uh, you know an older electric horn. Nav lights all original. Trailer usual. Not in great shape, but it does have uh, newer axle wheel hubs and brand new wheels and tires on it. I put those on. So I got to rewire the trailer with some lights and then we'll get this one put up for sale to get it on to its next owner. So that is the update. Uh, as I mentioned, I will have a, uh, I will get back to the Maracaibo project here fairly soon. Uh, haven't done anything with the seats uh, since where this video stopped. So. Got to get the seats built, um, but that's probably a couple weeks down the road. I'll probably miss a, a weekly update on this one here coming up pretty soon. But I will get back to it, and uh, there's plenty of videos coming out on Thirsty Whale winter maintenance. Um, and then we're just, uh, what, six or eight weeks away from getting, uh, getting Thirsty Whale launched again for the 2023 boating season up in Sturgeon Bay. So hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time on the Wisco Boater Channel. Happy boating, everybody.